put these out there because I know some people are looking for compact cameras that have good quality and th these are definitely those that have good quality they just it depends on what you're looking for and the level of professionalism that you expect out of the gear So, so this is my part two. I should have actually made this video first. Um, I'm on the search for an adventure camera, a travel camera that you can just put in your pocket, put in your backpack, and take with you anywhere. Portable that doesn't make you stand out, that doesn't, that doesn't make you feel weird about bringing out expensive gear out on the street. You don't have to baby it, you know what I mean? Something just easy, take it out and use it, and get great shots. However, in my search, I have realized that I've been spoiled with high quality gear and expensive lenses and cameras and I've become a freaking image quality snob. And some cameras are just not cutting it for me, unfortunately. I, I've, I've grown out of being okay <laughs> with lower image quality. And so in my search for that type of camera that I'm talking about, my first, uh, I'm a Sony shooter mostly, my first options were the RX series. And as you know, they don't have APS-C or full frame sensors. They're one inch sensors. And I thought it would be okay with an inch sensor. I've used them before. I had an RX 100 version three before. So I said, why not? I'm gonna give it a shot. I mean, it's just, a, it's just an extra camera. I don't need the professional level. I was wrong. <laughs> one inch sensors don't cut it for me. Image quality wise, um, you'd have to have perfect lighting. Uh, dynamic range is okay, depending on the camera you're looking at, but noise is usually a lot higher. Um, you don't get the same isolation. You might have a fast lens, but that compensates because it's such a small sensor. Even a 1.7 on a one inch is equivalent to like an F1000 on a full frame. It's still you're not gonna get that much blur, you're gonna get a lot of noise and low light. There's a lot of limitations. So I didn't want to be so negative about it. So I did I did give it a try. I have tried the RX 103 and I took it to Europe. I loved it. Um, I got a lot of pictures that I probably wouldn't have gotten because of the portability and just the ease of use, but I don't know, there's something missing in those files that didn't fulfill my photo quality snob needs so I tossed it so recently I try I wanted to try out a bridge camera I feel like it's not portable obviously so it totally defeats the purpose of finding a portable camera but they come with a lens integrated that goes from the wide end to capture large scenes up to a super far telly end that helps you get action so I was like, why not? I'm just gonna try it out. I was looking at the RX series because I'm a Sony shooter. That's the first place I looked. They were freaking pricey. They Those cameras keep their price point even after years of being released. It's kind of crazy. So I looked at the next best option and that was the Lumix series, which really competes with them. So I ended up getting one of these. Can't, it's an, it looks like an RX, but it's actually a Lumix. Panasonic and I've used Panasonic before so it wasn't anything new to me um, so I got this one which is the FZ 2500 and I got it because it has a little bit further zoom at the at the far telly end uh, 480 millimeters 24 millimeters at the wide end which is I mean where, where else do you get a lens that gives you that range uh, it's, it's kind of impossible to get that. So I, I tried it. I, I had it for a week. I was really excited I love the body the DSLR look and feel of this bridge camera um, But soon enough after a couple hundred pictures I started um, Putting them on my computer to edit because I love shooting in raw and Little by little I was more and more disappointed The image quality just wasn't there for me for that one inch sensor and I remembered why I had gotten rid of my RX100. It's I, I wasn't getting that blur, I wasn't getting that image detail that I that I love from larger sensor cameras. And so 
The first day I got it, I actually got lucky and saw a pelican dive from really high up straight down to get a fish. And I caught it on camera, autofocus did not fail me on this camera. I was shooting at high speed frame rates. I, I pretty much made a GIF out of it and I'll show you that after this, after I stop talking so much about it. Um, I, I really loved it. In the moment, looking back at the image through the viewfinder and the screen, looking at the screen, I, I was in awe. It looked sharp, everything looked amazing, the colors looked right. The moment I got home and uploaded them to edit on Lightroom, nothing like what I had seen on there. And I tried, I was shooting raw JPEG, did not look the same as on that screen through that EVF. Super downgrade disappointment on image quality, unfortunately. Very few were actually tech sharp. I don't know if it was the one inch sensor or just the resolution or the lens. I was disappointed. <laughs> and I mean, you get this camera because you want to use it at the wide end 24 and at this far 480 millimeter to capture the action. So when I started noticing that I wasn't getting the results, um, I was like, why do I, why should I keep it then, you know? It's, it's kind of, um, I don't want to have stuff I'm not going to use. So I ended up returning it. So overall, in the end, do I recommend the bridge camera? It's hard for me to say I do. Um, I recommend the bridge camera to those who just want to shoot. They don't care about lenses. They don't care so much about having the best of the best. Um, you just want to have one camera, not worry about any lens switching, uh, just take snapshots. It's certainly uh, versatile, but it comes with a trade-off, and that trade-off is image quality. Uh, that trade-off is the smaller sensor. You just want one camera, you want to take it wherever you go, and that's it. You're never going to buy another camera in a couple of years. That's who the bridge camera is for, I think. Um, they've done a lot to appeal to more professional and enthusiasts, but it just doesn't cut it for me. Um, the sensor's too small. I, I, I just can't take anything in low light. Um, I love my isolation. Isolation of the subject is, is key to photography, and I, I just couldn't do it as effectively with this camera. So unfortunately, I got rid of it, and if you saw my previous video, my next camera that I tested out was the Fuji X100S, which had its own downsides and positives though, but I'd say it was better than this camera, even though it had one little 35 millimeter equivalent focal length compared to a 24 to 480, the Fuji was way better. Just the fact that the sensor is bigger, it just, and it's older. <laughs> that camera is like, four years older than this uh, Lumix that I used and it was still better. So thank you for joining me. I'm gonna review the Fuji X-E3 soon. Damn it, kitty. Stop scratching me. God. She's trying to make a hole in my pants. Um, <laughs> where was I? X-E3, I'm gonna review it um, and see if that's the camera I've been looking for. For just a carry wherever I go, nothing professional, but still get some really good image quality. And it has all the film simulations. It should be a better experience, but I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, I've been really sticking to the music lately. I'm, I'm probably still going to make a little bit more music um, content more than photography, but I wanted to put these out there because I know some people are looking for compact cameras that have good quality. And th these are definitely those that have good quality. They just, it depends on what you're looking for and the level of professionalism that you expect out of the gear. So thanks for watching.